Okay. Hi, everyone. Yeah. My name is Jill Angelo Birnbaum, and I am the founder of the Moondog Farm. I want to thank each and every one of you for being with us and supporting our mission and journey of helping special needs dogs as well as guinea pigs and rabbits. And thank you for spending today with us. I am so excited. I really am excited to introduce my new friends and forever friends and their amazing talents. Please meet the Animal Communication Collective group of amazing women who are able to communicate with our pets. Julie, Karen, Meredith, and Vicki are here to talk to and tell you about themselves, as well as talk to some of the moon dog farm animals that are available for adoption. I'm going to let you ladies take it from here. All right, great. Thank you. So we're so excited to be here. Um, the four of us are members of the Animal Communication Collective. Um, our founder is Karen Dundee Smith. She's here with us. And our co-director is Meredith Tolleson. Uh, my name's Julie Heert, and we also have with us the fabulous Vicki Sondheim as well, who is Thank will you. be helping us do these readings today. And I'll let everyone just do a brief little introduction of themselves as well. Karen, do you want to say hi? Well, hey, everybody who is watching and for everyone who watches this later, um, I am the, the founder of the Animal Communication Collective. We are a, an amazing organization of 30 plus professional animal communicators, certified and professional female communicators, which is really cool, a women run organization. Um, and we do these volunteer um, events for rescues and shelters all around the country. And we are helping Jill with the Moondog Farm right now. And we are so thrilled to be here um, to talk about animal communication and connected with some of her animals. I have a background in um, energy work and Qigong instruction. And so uh, I bring that information with me to the animals and I'm looking forward to sharing with you all today. Cool. Meredith. Hi, I'm Meredith Tolleson. I'm also a certified soul level animal communicator so level intuitive coach. I have a background in um, canine behavior and training, and I bring that to the table along with my experience in animal Reiki and lots of other life experiences. Um, love doing this work. Love doing it with these ladies. I'm super excited to be working with Jill in the Moondog Farm. Vicki. Thank you. I'm Vicki Sondheim, and like Karen and Meredith and Julie, I'm also a um, so level intuitive no, so little animal communicator, sorry. <laughs> my nerves are, I'm having a hard time with my nerves not getting the best of me here. Um, and I'm also a soul level intuitive coach, um, spiritual mentor. My background is a little bit of everything, you know, and, until I grew weary and tired of it or felt like I had mastered it to the degree that it satisfied my need, I guess, at that time. And so um, now I'm semi-retired and just working with the animals and doing the coaching because I love it so much. Yeah, awesome. So today what we're going to do is we're going to um, connect with at least four, if not more than that, five maybe, uh, animals that are currently in the care of the Moon Dog Farm. And we're doing this in an effort to give all of you an idea of what the event on December 6th will look like. So the Animal Communication Collective has partnered or is partnering with Jill and the Moondog Farm to do a live fundraising event on December 6th. Tickets are only $25 and you can add additional raffle tickets to win free private readings with any of us, as well as an after party with the one and only Andrew Harvey, which I know we're all excited. I'm super excited because I love mystics. He's one of the ones I follow. I'm so excited. So anyway, so we're going to meet with him too after the event. So if you take a look, we'll put uh, the information on the Moon Dog Farms Facebook page as to how to buy your ticket. But go ahead and get those because they're going fast. And we're really excited. We'll be picking from members of the audience intuitively on who would like to have a reading. So your animals, whether they're alive or in spirit, will actually kind of flag us, <laughs> for lack of a better word, and we'll be doing live uh, in-person animal communication readings. Sorry, not in person, but live on Zoom. So this is what we're doing also today to give you all a little sampling of it. So ladies, we ready to get started? We are ready. Yeah. 
All right. So Jill, even though we talked about this a little bit before, why don't you go ahead and give us the information as if this was the event and we didn't know the, sure. uh, the, the two that you wanted us to start with. Okay. The first two that I'm asking for information on are Lenny and Benny. They are male, alive, guinea pigs, and they're bonded pair. Okay. And the question, I think, is you want to know what they're looking for in their forever home? Was yes. that? Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. So, Karen, first yes. thing, do you have a sense of, you know, it's so funny, who wants to come in first? Because I had it earlier a different way, but now it's, it's flipped, so I don't know. Who did you hear? Who's telling you they want to come in first? Now it's Lenny. Interesting. Okay. Is it, is it different? For, I wonder though, if it's different for you. So I kept hearing Benny in the jets. Okay. Benny. <laughs> okay. Benny. Benny. <laughs> that too was first. Like when I was, was doing, when we were talking through first. And then just as I looked down at my paper and I'm like, okay, is it still Benny? I like, I see Lenny kind of muscle and Benny out of the way. So I have a sense that maybe we do, we each do one. And okay. together we can talk about them as if the bonded, we're the bonded pair. Is okay. That, let's that sounds play. fabulous. Okay. All right. So I'm Lenny, you're Benny. <laughs> yes, I am. Okay. All right. I, oh my gosh. You know what I just, what Lenny just gave me is like two people dressed up almost as like attorneys. <laughs> and like, <laughs> I'm, I'm Lenny's representative and you're Benny's representative. I love it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, so we're going to get a sense of their personalities and share that with you, Jill. And if something makes sense, tell us yes. If it doesn't, just say no because we don't know what we're talking about. So we have, so you're not going to hurt our feelings. Just tell, and you can do thumbs up or thumbs down if that's easier for you. Okay. All right, Lenny. All right, Lenny. So Lenny shows me him as oh shoot who's the at first it was the one of the three he was one of the three stooges but then he showed me there was a black and white um in black in the days of black and white harold keating harold keaton he was the comic he was like one he was like same time as charlie chaplin and the he's showing me that particular black and white film star the comic at the time because he was really good at physical comedy, that particular one. And Lenny is saying, that's me. I'm the one. And he like throws his head up and neck up and shoulder face. Like, that's me. I'm the one that, and he even puts like his thumbs in, like if he had overalls on like this, I'm the one to make everybody laugh is what I'm hearing him say. Does that make sense at all, Jill? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and from Benny's perspective, he came in, um saying that he is the more he tell he made me feel like I he's the more sensitive one and it's and he brought me to Lenny and Squiggy right because Lenny was kind of the 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 louder one for Squiggy and the show uh, which I don't even know what show that is what is Learning that from Laverne and Shirley oh Laverne and Shirley okay oh, yeah. so Lenny and Squiggy he's like Benny saying I'm kind of like Lenny Squiggy so um no wonder why he he wanted to carve out his own space because he also makes you feel like he's a little more sensitive to everything that's going on, but he relies on, he makes me feel like he relies on um, Lenny to hold some energetic space for him as well, because Lenny has a bigger energy. And as you say that, Karen, Lenny makes me, shows me how Benny, as you said that, it's like, if I'm Lenny, I'm looking over at you, Benny. And all I feel is like, I can even see this big heart and it's like, and then I hear you ground me, you get me. Yeah. And I also hear this set, this phrase, you complete me. And I know they're bonded, but there is this real sense of, I like he's showing me the symbol of yin yang too. this, you know, we're kind of in one another, but we're also our own thing, but we together, we make a pair and a whole and yeah, Lenny just, even though he's the funny one. He's really, there's a sense of gratitude about Benny. Does that make sense? And uh, and also Lenny, uh, Benny, my Benny, you're Lenny. <laughs> I'm Benny. Benny is um, telling me that he, he needs a little more time to eat his food than Lenny does. 
but that Lenny will kind of watch the space for him while he eats um, and make sure nobody else gets in his way. So they definitely feel to me, the way that Benny is making me feel is like they really watch out for each other and um, and Benny is relieved that there's no one else around him that Lenny watches over to make sure that doesn't happen. So the more I hear this, I'm starting to get a hit. Benny is starting to paint the picture of how a happy life would look for the two of them if they were to leave where they're living, which I, I don't feel like they're unhappy there, but it's like, if I, we're going to go somewhere else, please know this is, this is our energy. I like to eat slower and Lenny watches over me. So I don't like anybody else around and in my space. Does that make sense, Jill? Very much, very much. Yeah. Um, to yes. follow up on what Benny's asking for, as far as what would a hope forever home look like too. It was interesting because Lenny's also answering it before the question was formally asked. Um, Lenny was showing me, um, he keeps saying the word barrel, but he shows me like toilet paper rolls mm -hmm. and like he moving over them and playing and going in them and really kind of using what I'm, I'm also hearing him say like physical toys, but simple, like recycled, yeah. reuse, reduce, he even says too, he's very earth conscious. <laughs> but I hear him saying like, he likes what I hear him say, I, I like the, I like to watch and have that physical interaction as well and I like to have things that are and I see him doing this with his like tactile mm -hmm. um, tactile types of toys and things like that I also hear him say and it backs up to some degree what Benny was sharing is for a home something where we don't have to be like it's not the center of the attention but we're the focal point because we have specific jobs to do you know Benny brings a sense of groundedness to me and I would like to bring a sense of play to somebody so someone who can really just focus on us and as Benny was saying hold space that's for Lenny that's what Lenny is saying that he would like as well as he's speaking to some degree for Benny but I get the sense that Benny likes to shove him out of the way and let him talk because <laughs> Lenny feels like he's getting pushed over so go ahead Karen. Yeah. so I'm um, sweet I'm um, sweet Benny so Benny, actually, as you were sharing what Lenny likes, which is the play and the activity, Benny was actually showing me like someone's hands, just like very gently holding him and love and like being very kind and gentle with him mm -hmm. um, and just being very peaceful with him. He also says he likes when somebody just kind of gently whispers or talks to him mm -hmm. and when they hold him in his hands. Um, he likes the warmth of someone's hands. He doesn't mind. He wants to feel safe enough to sleep mm. in someone's hands. That's the kind of person that Benny is saying would make him feel good mm -hmm. if he were to go to someone else. So somebody who, and I, I don't know why, I don't even want to separate my hands right now while I'm talking. It's like somebody will just sit there and, and just sit with him and make him feel safe that he, so safe he could fall asleep in their hands. Also, he makes me feel like leaving on some soft music in the room with them, if you're not there with them, he would very much appreciate. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do yeah. I get to, can I yes. fill in a couple blanks? Yes, yeah. please. Hey, the two of you are actually so spot on. Um, Lenny is the one who's more of the protective one of Mr. Sensitive Benny. Um, Benny was the one that was a little bit more apprehensive for letting someone hold him. So while he was in foster care, his foster mom was exactly that in the gentle place of the two hands holding him to give him reassurance because he guinea pigs, as most people know, are prey animals. So when you do get get to get them to hold them, they're usually afraid someone wants to eat them. So to be able to build that trust. So Lenny's always kind of being the protector of him. So both of you were very spot on on it. And while they were here before they went and moved on to foster care to keep space open for me, we always played. I always play classical music oh. in all the rooms for all of the animals. 
So, and I knew that I, I've always wanted to know that it was beneficial to them. And now I have clarity that there's beneficial to that. We listen, they all listen to classical music every day. So well done, spot on ladies. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Kisses to Lenny and Benny. Yeah. Yeah. Lenny does want to say fresh. He loves the fresh veggies, particularly like lettuce, leafy greens. And I guess that's what they eat, but loves it. And the fresher, the better is what I'm hearing him say. So they have a crew of three women who are spoiling them to bits right now, who prepare daily salads for them, including tiny cut up little pieces so that it's easy for them. Not that it shouldn't be, but when I tell you these women go out of their way, they go of above and beyond. So I'm glad to know that he looks for that and he approves. Yes. And, uh, and appreciates. There's a deep sense yes. of community too. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Thank All you. Right. Well, let's turn it over to Meredith and Vicki. And okay. they next animal. All right, Meredith and Vicki, I would like for you to share what you know about Luna. She is a female. She is alive. And she is a Hoto rabbit. Okay. Hoto rabbit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So um, I'll jump right in, Vicki, if that's okay. That's fine, yeah. I um, I have found that as I'm doing readings, something about the name always is the first thing that pops in to give me a little bit of an insight into their personality. And I see a great big full moon with the, um, you know, when you're looking at the craters and you can see the face in the moon, looking down and I think today is a full moon um looking down just spreading a gentle delicate light over everything the light of a full moon is so much different than just light of any moon um I see gentleness I see twinkles I see sparkles but I see this from the distance from the the height of the heavens like just looking down everything so it's a very observative observant um sensation of just watching and taking it all in but at the same time um spreading this this delicate rare um beautiful light on things it feels so peaceful and calming to me does that make sense in terms of her personality? Am I to answer? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, yes or no, right now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's very, she came in almost identical for me, Meredith, to how you describe. Only for me, she was the moon. She was taking up that space. And it was her energy that I saw um, mother is the first word that that came to mind for me. But also that those sprinkles that you described to me, it's like they they were they were delightful, they were playful, they were joyous. And so it's just like she's um I don't even want to use the word showering because you know like the mist from a waterfall as it sort of settles into all those places, just this energetic mist of mother and she knows everything that's going on. She's watching everything. And she's watching it with so much love. Does this make sense, Jill? Okay. And I, I'm hearing love, yes, and grace. There's some sense of um, grace, both in terms of movement, of fluidity, like a, a ballerina, but also in terms of grace for all living things and kindness there's a sense of it even makes me want to speak more slowly and more quietly um it's like seeing this whole scene through through cheesecloth like an old um hollywood movie where the filter's on and everyone looks so delicate and and ethereal um i'm just feeling a sense of peace and and quietness um but also care care for those in her environment um and it's not necessarily in the sense of actively nurturing it's just in the sense of being that there's there's comfort and that word grace just keeps coming to me what 
<laughs> when as Meredith is talking about care and kind of leading up through that, I'm also feeling, Jill, that she has a very strong connection with you and that she she's very grateful to you, but also that she counts you um she cares for you very deeply. That it's like I feel a connection between the two of you. Does that I mean I know that that does that make sense? It feels very special, like a bond there. Yeah. So I almost can't help but go to um go to the question of what would she be looking for in her forever home? She's she's opening up this scene for me. And um it's very feminine. It's a very feminine energy. And I actually see an image of a young girl, mm -hmm. um, a very quiet, um, I, I want to say that she's almost very intuitive. Like she's a very quiet, sensitive, not delicate, but not, um, not a tomboy in any way. I don't see young boys running around. I don't feel that she particularly wants children, but a bond with a younger female who I'm seeing in literally pigtails with ribbons and ruffles and little um, black patent leather Mary Jane shoes. It's almost a Sally Dick and Jane sort of simpler, kinder, gentler childhood, um, but a very sensitive, caring young woman. I actually see her sitting at a, a little table having a little tea party. Like it's just a one-on-one -on -one connection between the two of them. I'm going to check into that a little bit more. While you go, Vicki. Yeah, I'm also, it's like playful, little girl, younger energy, right? But also innocence is coming through. So that I, I feel like it, it could be a younger girl, but the innocence is one of the qualities to me that Luna is really feeling drawn towards. I'm also seeing her, the way that she um, came into this space, my space, it's like her energy filled the, filled my space, right? But she stayed watching everything. And I think that it would be important to her in her physical space to not necessarily be in the center of the room, but to be back someplace where she has a view of everything and can watch and kind of fill that space with it. It's not like she's guarding it or protecting it in any way, but she does just like to be aware of the surroundings and, and she likes to shower it with that grace and love. So a physical place where she can do that. I know nothing about habitats or how rabbits need to need to live, but I see windows with sheer curtains on them. Um, that same sort of filtered light coming through. I see I see clear spaces, glass, not cluttered, and I actually see this little little young girl laying her in a baby cradle and covering her up with a soft little blankie. Um, there's comfort, there's openness, there's airiness around her and quiet and calm. There's not chaos. There aren't a bunch of kids running around. There's not, you know, um, people fighting or any, there's just this, this togetherness with the two of them, but, um, but open and spacious and light colors and filtered light is what I'm seeing. And there, there's also like there's a caring, um, the same way that she's caring for you, Jill. I, I really feel like um, healing is the word that's coming through, right? It's like she cares in a way that helps. I mean, all animals do this. I know this, but that helps heal in a way like this girl that Meredith and I have been talking about um, in this sensitivity. And there's a seriousness about her as well. It's like she looks at life very seriously. And I see Luna with her in that space as, as somebody that she can hold to her heart and help her help her heart heal in a way. This doesn't feel like a big thing, but it does feel like there's something that Luna really wants to help this, this little girl heal. I agree with you, Vicki. It feels like a mutual healing mm -hmm. experience as if this this young girl has some sort of injury or and, and can't be outside very much or maybe it's just the softness of and tender tenderness of her heart that I'm feeling but there's something about we have this time together and those other things aren't important to me right now a mutual yeah. healing 
And this little girl just cares very, very deeply in much the same way, Jill, she's pointing me back to you again, in very much the same way that you care so deeply. Do you feel that that answers some questions, Jill? Fill I in do. the blanks for Thank us. Thank you. Sure. Okay. So, Miss Luna, Miss Luna, it was believed, Vicki, I think you made a reference to motherhood in a, a virtual type of way. Um, we do know that there's a great probability when she was spayed that she had had a litter at one point. Um, you were speaking about her where you didn't want to use the word shower and I'll use the word radiate. Her fur glistens, the black around her eyes and the long eyelashes that she has. And she has a teeny little bit of sass where she somewhat arrives, but it's a gentle, it's like a woman who is in her body and aware of who she is. And she just, she's there. And that's exactly the way that this rabbit behaves. Um, from not knowing habitat, um, they do like to have hides because again, we're back at prey animals and hers, she's angled to be in the corner of the room to be observant of everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. And when she's out and about, she goes to visit all of those around her. So she checks in to make sure that all are okay. Um, she's very neat. She is playful. Um, so again, I'm going to say well done and spot on. Thank you. And thank you for giving me the, uh, the um, ideas of who would be a good match for her in her forever home. I appreciate that. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That was beautiful, you guys. <laughs> yeah, it sure was. It sure was. All right. So now um, Vicky and I, I think, are going to do a reading, another another animal for you, Jill. Yes. All right. The next, his name is Mikey. And he is a male. Um, he is alive. And he is a dwarf rabbit. Okay. All right. All right, Vicky. Okay, I'm just going to thank and disconnect from Luna here real quickly as well, because that was. Because it is a full moon right now. So, yeah, she's pretty. Powerful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so while Vicky is finishing up her disconnection, Mikey just cannot wait. Like, hi, <laughs> I just feel this. Uh, kinetic is the word he uses kinetic energy and I don't know why but he's reminding me of so back in the day Taco Bell had this chihuahua that had the that did the line you'll get a Taco Bell and so that's kind of the voice that Mikey wants to use like hey hello hi how are you doing hi here I am hello 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 and I <laughs> I just have this also sense like he also shows me Antonio Banderas <laughs> but more in like you know, not to be stereotypical, I don't mean anything stereotypical, but this idea of like this Latin lover in that there is a, there is a caring that Mikey provides. There is an attention that Mikey provides. There is a romance that Mikey can provide and a really sense of holding his person in a really sacred space. And there's just this whole, but there's also this cheekiness, which is where the little Yo Quiero Taco Bell comes, <laughs> comes in mind as well he's just really fun and energetic like I see him with I don't know what the things are the musical instrument with the you shake them or yeah cast in is that, I don't know maracas yes. shake those maracas yeah <laughs> yes what are you getting Vicky about Mikey <laughs> it, it was similar I was still disconnecting with Luna and he was already trying for my attention it was like hurry up now hurry up I'm here and um the same thing it's it's like um like a play, playful seriousness almost. I don't, and then flirtatiousness. I kind of all wrapped up. It was, um, but in this kind of um, tight little energetic bundle, I guess I would say it was like it, it was hard for me. It was um, 
it really took some time to slow down and start to discern some of these parts that were all put together in this one energetic package. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm already asking Mikey, what are you looking for in your forever home? And I hear him say, and he shows me vibrant colors and he, it, and he's saying like vibrancy in life. And at the same time, he wants to make sure he has a quiet place to recharge. So what he shows me is people who are willing to interact with him and have a little fun and allowing him to lead the play. I hear him say, and then at the same time though, when I'm, when I'm done, I need to be able to have my quiet space, my alone, I hear him say alone time. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very similar for me. It's like he wants what he wants when he wants it. And there are times when he's going to want the spotlight on him and he's going to want to be the center of attention. And then when he's done, he's done. Very, very similar to what you're saying, Julie, there. Mm -hmm. Go back to him real quick and see what else he wants to share. Okay. Yeah. I was asking him too. And because he's, he's so quick. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then he shifted for me when I was asking what else he just, he also wanted to, he also wants to say, I want someone who's really going to pay attention to my diet mm -hmm. because I hear him say, I can be a little naughty <laughs> and I can get into some stuff that I don't really need to get into. So I really want someone who's going to be really mindful about what is the best nutrition for me. And really kind of make sure that I stay on that, I hear him say straight and narrow, <laughs> so that I can be the healthiest that I can absolutely be. Yeah, no, agreed. Because it's it's like he will eat, not even just what's put in front of him. It, it seems like it's just, he, yeah, he's adventurous. He will, he'll eat just about anything, whether it's good for him or not. He wants somebody else to help him discern, is this good for me? Yeah. And take it and, and take it off the menu. I'm hearing if it's not right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Vicky, when you said the word adventurous, he goes, oh, I love that word. That's a perfect word. <laughs> a perfect word. <laughs> adventurous. Well, and I, he also, it's like, I see a little bit of like a, a mess in his way too. It's like, like you had talked about earlier about Luna being, you know, very clean and tidy. Mikey doesn't feel quite as clean and tidy to me. It sounds like he, he, he'll just, he'll go exploring and, and digging into things and he'll leave a mess in his wake and doesn't care. That's, that's, Yeah. Yeah, his creations, I hear him say. Right. I like that. <laughs> That's how he creates. Don't you like it? <laughs> They'll know I was here. Yeah. I was here. <laughs> exactly. He's also, she's showing me, is it Banksy? Banksy, the graphic, the um, graffiti artist. He's showing me, yeah, I'm just Banksy. I'm just leaving my mark everywhere I go. But where did I go? You can't see me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's Big sense of play. Go ahead, Vicki. Sorry. I was just going to ask him if there's any more he wants to share with us about um, his, his, his ideal or his, his new home where, where he would like to be. Cause I feel he shared a bit, but is there more there, Mikey, you'd like to share? Just space for him to be him, right? Not to have somebody else's expectations or um, ideas of what he should be. You know, it's like Mikey wants to be Mikey and, and he, he actually is looking for a human that is curious and would like to go on that adventure with him as, you know, they can, they can co-create it and shape it together. Not so much tell him what he should be. Does that make sense? Yeah. And lastly, he just says for me to answer that question is he's showing me people who can be really mindful of his size and there is, he is aware mm -hmm. of his fragility and wants me to make sure that whoever can, whoever handles him comes at him with that respect and understanding. And I hear cushion too. So he's not necessarily yeah. afraid of little kids, but he just wants to make sure that they can absolutely respect that fragility and that smallness. So. Yeah. Especially since what he's, what he's showing me as well is that he won't, um, he's got a bit of a bravado, so he's not going to necessarily show that fragility. So same as with the food, you know, he, he would like his, his new home, the, the, the humans in his new home to be mindful. Yeah. Yeah. Jill, does that answer the questions for you? Thank you so much for these insights. Um, I know some of him and I do not, and I'm starting to see the side 
the playful side that you both are referring to, which is wonderful. Because when he arrived, he was pretty shut down. And I don't think that he was able to be himself in the home that he was in because I'm not sure that the people who had him knew what to do and how to be with rabbits, which can happen often. So for lack of a better way, I'll say he may have acquiesced and reduced himself to fit in to belong even though that wasn't who he is or wanted to be um, because we know what they can do right so this gives me a lot of insight for him I see the um, he was a little pudgy so we've worked on the weight so thank you for that um, some rabbits well every poop will make that litter box not all rabbits do mikey doesn't make all of his poops in the litter box so that's not a bad thing but there are blankets and such in there and he does like to rearrange them and create his own space some of that is by pushing them forward so he's got a little bit of a barricade to see what's going on while he's in his hide um he is a great eater of what he does eat and he is very mindful of eating the majority of his hay which is what we all want in the rabbit world so that's fantastic too so thank you for that um he does do exactly what you were saying he likes to be out and about and when he's done he hops back in to his x pen and he goes to his hide and he relaxes and you know we honor that and it's it's really important too to have him say that because that helps us obviously with the people who are going to look to adopt. So again, great job, spot on. And thank you for the insights because I have more to continue to look for. I'm seeing his true personality come out and it's good to see that that's what I, I see too. Um, in one of the words that I used as well um, was a little bit of bashful because that bashfulness has some flirtation to it, to both of your ladies' points in his personality. So thank you. This is great. You're welcome. It's really great. Thank yeah. you. All right, Karen and Meredith, do you want to do one more? Yes. Yeah, right. let's do one more. Um, and All right. What I, what I want to, I just want to say before we, Meredith and I start, as these guys are disconnecting from Mikey, what I, what I think we can all, all learn from this is every animal has a very individual personality, just like a human yeah. being. Yeah. And just because they're tiny, you know, little guinea pigs and little rabbits, we kind of limit our perspective of them having a personality. You know, we, we are used to, as human beings, assuming a dog's going to have a personality and you need to figure out what it is. Some of us even realize that happens with a cat. Many of us realize that horses have very powerful personalities. But when it comes to these little beings, sometimes we forget like, yeah. you know, little guinea pigs and mice and hamsters and, and rabbits, they all have individual personalities that we need to give them space to start to express themselves and build a partnership with yeah. them. So I love how they're all sharing how different they are from each other today. You know? I'm so grateful that you brought that up. I really am yeah. because not to say that the other littles aren't overlooked. They are. Being that guinea pigs and rabbits are something that we do here at Moondog, they are discarded at such alarming rates. And most of that is because people don't know enough or do enough research. Because to your point, there's yeah. assumptions made, expectations made of dogs and cats and horses. Um, but people don't know about guinea pigs and rabbits and they have strong personalities and, and they do yeah. speak their truth. And you can see, we have a pot belly pig and I, and he's 125 pounds and his name is Elmer. And I have this tiny little 116 gram guinea pig that was rejected by his mom. And they both weak and make noises in the same type of way. And you're just looking at the species of being pigs, but they can move their heads and they can grunt and make similar behaviors as the big to the little. So I'm really glad that you mentioned that. Thank you for that, Karen. It's important that, you yeah. know, they are speaking who they are. And I'm so glad we have your voices to share them with all of those yeah. who are watching and will watch. All right. You ready okay. for Snowy? We are ready. All right. <clears throat> Snowy is a female she is alive and she is a guinea pig too okay and same main question for her when we get to it is kind of like what does she look looking for in her yes. forever home okay yes all right sweet snowy 
I, I have to say, I feel like Snowy prompted me to say this, what I just said. I feel like it was really something that was important to her that um, part of her, part I, it, what she makes me feel as part of her past was being misunderstood about her personality. And so she really wanted, and I'm getting so many chills when I say this, and I'm getting, as I feel the emotion of this about being misunderstood because somebody didn't have the patience to kind of quietly have the patience to let her show them who she is. And that's desperately what she wants is for somebody to just be present with her and let, and actually get her sense of humor. She's got an interesting sense of humor. And she, she wants somebody to like have patience and let her like tell her jokes or be the silly girl that she really is, but it's a quirky silly. That's what I'm getting so far. Meredith, what are you picking up about Snowy? So before you even finish giving her name and everything, I have this, this visual image of a cow, a cow standing in a pasture, um, eating, eating grass. Um, and she's, she's telling me that she likes this space, this sort of, um, independence, but within the group, there is, there are other cows in this field but they're all just doing their own thing. They're not chitter chattering. They're not really interacting. They're all just kind of standing around in the same place at the same time, eating their food and having a little bit of quiet. And she shows me that it's very, very cold, but that she's, she's tough and she's thick. Like she's showing me like a, she's a bit of a, I don't know if she physically is or not, but she's showing me a chunky, healthy, bigger girl and saying, I love my body. I love where I am. And I'm going to stand right here and be tough in this cold and eat my grass next to these other cows, but not necessarily together with them. I have no idea what any of that means, but that was the imagery she was showing me. Does this make sense, Jill, before we go on? Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> um, I don't know what it is about her, but there's something about her wanting to, I'm seeing the word autonomous. So she, um, I almost see like maybe a couple of other guinea pigs in the distance, but not all up in her grill. <laughs> so there's something about her. Um, people don't realize that she's saying to me, people don't realize we converse, even if we're like across the room for each other with the way we go, wait, 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 wait. We're all, we're all talking, um, but some of us need more space than others. So she really wants to make that clear too. Don't dump me in with the rest. Does this make sense to you? I don't know why she's saying there can be one or two others next to me, but I want separation. And then when we do come together, we can visit for a while if you watch, but I want my own, I want my own apartment. Yeah. <laughs> I want my own condo in the city. It's kind of, what yeah. she, you know, does that make sense, yeah. Jill? It's exactly how Miss Snowy lives. <laughs> it's exactly how she lives. She is in a phenomenal foster home and she is a solo pig in her own condo where there are other pigs around her, but it's her condo. Mm -hmm. She was brought into a shelter with another pig and she was separated from that pig. And, um, there are other pigs around her in their habitats where they do chit chat and they do talk. Um, but she likes her own and she's very particular about her environment. So her foster moms explained that she has to be taken out of her habitat in order to clean her habitat because she'll rearrange it while you're cleaning it. Otherwise, forget it. So they take her out so they can clean it because yeah. she will fix what they do mm -hmm. right behind them. Yeah. So I can't wait for Linda and, and um, Lauren to hear this about her because it is totally spot on. Yeah. Yeah. And she is, she was misunderstood. She, mm -hmm. she's, and to your point, Meredith, she is a full grown as some would refer to as a sow. She is a mature female guinea pig. So. She got a little bit of a curve to her and I mean, she's perfect size and shape, but most of us are used to people getting younger pigs that are smaller, adolescent, juveniles, babies. So when you see a mature female, this is who she is. You know, it's kind of like unapologetically. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. 
This is great. She feels and, very confident in that body. Yeah. And she feels she very is. aware of, it's like Lauren Bacall to me, you know, like just a beautiful woman who you have no question of mm -hmm. where she's standing and how she's presenting herself, you know? And actually it's so funny, Meredith, she was showing me like scenes from Sex in the City, like, and at first I was like, are you Sarah Jessica Parker? She's like, no, I'm the PR one. What's that? What, what is the blonde woman's? I can't remember her name, but it's Samantha. Samantha. She's Samantha. Because Samantha. Samantha did things her way. She had her own apartment. She was in yeah. charge. And she would, sometimes she'd let people in. And yeah. I, I feel like Snowy wants to let someone into her heart, but on her terms. Mm-hmm. So what I get with that is um, she likes the safety and security of knowing someone's there, like sitting with a good friend in chairs on the beach, side by side, but not talking, but she doesn't need all of the, all of the chitter chatter and all of the interaction. She loves having um, a comfortable someone nearby, but doesn't have to be all together all the time something about that that independence but with a backup it's funny she just came up to me and like gave me a kiss <laughs> like with her little with her nose she just went thank yeah. you yeah they do nibble they so, do nibble. so sweet and this is helpful because usually there's ages when we bond pigs and then we we don't bond pigs they can have companionship um because it's just the stages of where they are, you know, when they're in that teenage years, it's really hard to try to bond males because they can really hurt each other. And so could females. Um, what's great about Snowy is, is that Snowy could live in her condo with another female pig who's very similar in her condo and they can communicate back and forth and chit chat and have that companionship, which is one of the questions that we do ask people when they adopt. What if the bonding doesn't work out? Will you keep them in separate habitats, but they still will have companionship? And thankfully for us, in almost all cases, people are willing to do that. And this makes it just easier to set her up for even greater success in her family, because if there's a family out there who's willing to have her have her own habitat and live with two habitats, she's going to have a great life. And let me sidebar this. She's having a great life in her, in her foster home right now. So I don't want yeah. it to seem as though she isn't. She is much loved in her foster home too. She seems very happy yeah. to, to me energetically right now. Yeah. So that's Wait. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Great. This has been great. Well, this has been really fun. Mm -hmm. um, thank you all for who have come and watched. And thank you all who do watch in the future on this. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm going to let Julie here explain what's coming up on Wednesday, December 6th, so that you can all buy tickets and we will be connecting with you all, talking to your animals. Right. Julie. Awesome. That was great. Um, yeah. So December 6th at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, we're going to do this exact same thing, the four of us reading. Uh, your animals. So for those of you in the audience, your animals are going to help us choose intuitively who wants to talk. <laughs> so just like this, and we'll pair up just like we did today. The event again starts at 6 p.m. Central. It'll go for 90 minutes and we'll try to get to, we'll try to get through eight. We may only get to six. It depends on how verbose the animals are. <laughs> we have them lead the entire conversation. So however much they want to talk, we let them do so. So come be prepared. And if you would like to have your, an, you know, if you'd like to be chosen, just be prepared that your animal might be going, hey, that one, that one over there. So that's for 90 minutes. Then right after that, for another at least half an hour, we're going to have the absolute pleasure of hearing from Andrew Harvey, who is a spiritual teacher. He's also a sacred activist, very much about animals. And we're going to hear from him for about, again, half an hour. That's the after pate <laughs> that you can purchase an additional ticket to attend. You can also buy raffle tickets uh, that you can win a private 30-minute soul-level animal communication session 
with any of us four. So there are five raffle tickets because we do have someone on tech who's also an animal communicator who's joining us. And each one of us is giving away a free reading for free. So make sure to buy your raffle tickets. And not to forget, there's also the special Matthew Fox bundle. So for those of you who are fans of the priest and theologian Matthew Fox, he's offered up a, a, an excerpt of his book that for those of you that buy the Matthew Fox bundle, you'll be able to come to all the aspects of the event. You'll get to go to the, the actual main event, the after party, and get some raffle tickets. And wait, there's more. There's an excerpt from one of his books as well as potentially a private video from him, a video that you'll you'll have access to. So take a look at those. Everything is on Eventbrite. There is there are multiple links within the Moon Dog Farm uh, Facebook page, multiple posts where you can get the link to be able to buy your tickets. Again, it is next Wednesday night at six p.m. Central, seven p.m. Eastern. It is with all of us that you see here on the screen, and we're really looking forward to seeing everybody. Did I miss anything, Jill? You did not. Okay. I just want to thank all of you for your time today and for everything that you're giving to the Moondog Farm. I want to thank everybody who's with us now live and those of you who are going to watch this afterward. I want to send blessings to the animals that we read so that hopefully, or that you read, so that hopefully they can all find their most perfect forever homes. And I'm just so grateful for everybody's love and support. It takes a village and we have an amazing village. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>